Hi, ArcfieldWeather.com meteorologist Paul Dorian here on Thursday morning, January 11th. A lot to talk about this morning. Uh, first of all, we have some intense cold that we'll have to deal with across the nation over the next 7 to 10 days or so. That's really starting in the short term, extending out to the medium term and the long term as well. We'll kind of start off the video discussion uh, regarding the intense cold in the medium term. We have a chance for accumulating snow along the the big cities of the I-95 corridor region in the early to middle part of next week. I'm talking about D.C., Philadelphia, New York City, where there hasn't been much snow at all over the last couple of years. There is a chance for accumulating snow in the early to middle part of next week. That's in the medium term. By the way, longer term, I think there's another chance of snow probably at the end of next week in the I-95 corridor region. And that could lead to uh, another invasion of Arctic air uh, by uh, the subsequent weekend. We're talking around January 20th or so, uh, give or take a couple of days. It could be brutally cold air in the northeastern part of the nation on what could be on the heels of a second snow event along the I-95 Carter region. In the short term, we have a blizzard to talk about across much of the Midwest, the Great Lakes. That same storm system will produce some heavy rainfall, strong winds in the mid-Atlantic region, the northeast U.S., and we'll kind of go in reverse order here in terms of t time sequence, starting with the longer term, the intense cold, then the medium term, the I-95 snow threats, and then we'll get to the short term, the blizzard for the Great Lakes and uh, Midwest. First of all, this is a forecast map by yesterday's European model run for Saturday morning's actual temperatures, not the uh, anomalies, but the actual temperatures as of Saturday morning over the state of Montana. And just take a look at some of these values here. These are minus 36 degrees, for example, minus 35 degrees as of Saturday morning. These are in uh, Fahrenheit. But what I really wanted to point out, take a look at this. The uh, lowest temperature in this time period leading up to Saturday morning, minus 64.1 degrees. That's uh, right near Rogers Pass, Montana, which is somewhere up in this area right here. It's a higher elevation right along the Continental Divide. And that's impressive cold when you're talking about minus 64 degrees uh, uh, within the next 72 hours over uh, a place like Rogers Pass, Montana. By the way, Rogers Pass has not had, uh, the, the entire state of Montana, as far as I can tell, has not had a temperature at 60 degrees below zero since January of 1963. So indeed, this would be quite amazing if uh, it reaches 60 degrees below zero anywhere in the state of Montana. The all-time record at Rogers Pass, by the way, 70 degrees below zero. The last time 60 below was reached in Montana was somewhere in this area right here, West Yellowstone. This is the state of Wyoming right here, West Yellowstone, back again in January of 1963. Now let's talk a little, little bit more about this intense cold. Here we have the European model forecast from last night's zero Z run of the Euro. Uh, this is the 850 millibar temperature anomalies. Again, the last map we saw with actual air temperatures at the surface. This is 850 millibar temperature anomalies beginning with this morning, Thursday morning, January 11th. And we'll just move forward here and point out a few things along the way. This is a very, very cold air. When you're looking at color scheme like this on this particular map, which, by the way, comes from uh, tropicaltidbits.com, you're way down here at the, uh, the end of the scale here, all the way down to about 30 degrees below normal. And when you're in the middle of uh, January, 30 degrees below normal is some intense cold. And it makes a move south and east. It goes all the way down into Texas, obviously in a modified version. But we'll move forward here. Now we're over uh, the upcoming weekend into uh, Sunday morning right here. Notice a very significantly colder than normal all the way down into Texas. There are uh, some uh, possibilities that Dallas, for example, can get all the way down to 10 degrees uh, during the upcoming weekend. And notice the intrusion into the uh, Mid-Atlantic region. This is going to be on the heels of that Friday night, 
early Saturday system for the Mid-Atlantic region that helps to usher in this colder air, uh, uh, especially to be felt in the second half of, of the upcoming w weekend. And once this kind of this pattern sets up here with this channel of intensely cold air, uh, it, it will continue over the next seven to 10 days or so. It doesn't mean every single day over the next couple of weeks will be below normal in the mid-Atlantic region, but the, uh, most days will be. And there'll be kind of a uh, reinforcing Arctic air masses coming in uh, again, the possibility of some severe cold for the northeastern states of mid-Atlantic next weekend. Uh, we're talking about the uh, uh, 20th, 21st time frame or so. Let's keep moving forward. And again, dives all the way down into uh, the state of Texas, starts to move all the way east to the mid-Atlantic uh, coastline, the New England coastline. And by the way, this outbreak of Arctic air will certainly have a uh, an effect in some NFL playoff games this weekend in Kansas City, for example. They play Saturday night around 8 p.m., probably around zero degrees at, uh, at game time in Kansas City. In Buffalo on Sunday afternoon, they play about 1 p.m., very, very strong winds, probably still gusting up to 50 miles per hour or so on Sunday afternoon in Buffalo, and they'll Certainly be some lake effect snow showers to deal with uh, uh, late uh, Saturday and Saturday night and continuing in Buffalo uh, during the day on Sunday for that particular bowl game. Uh, Denver probably drops to 5 or 10 degrees below zero during this upcoming weekend. We'll just kind of push rapidly through the, uh, next week. This is uh, now the uh, next Tuesday time frame. And just want to go all the way out to uh, the, the, the weekend of the 20th, 21st. Here we are, Saturday, the 20, uh, 20th, another uh, kind of a reinforcing shot of some very, very cold air. And this time there could be some snow, uh, snow uh, cover, in, uh, at least in parts of the Mid-Atlantic region that do not uh, have snow right now. There could be snow cover by the time this reinforcing shot of Arctic air arrives and there's potential that this could end up with uh, maybe zero degrees in places like New York City. I'm talking about a week and a half from now, the 20th, 21st time frame. Uh, uh, again, some of that depends on if we do indeed uh, get snow cover. This is 10 days out, but something to look for in the eastern U.S. Now, let's start talking about the threat of accumulating snow in the I-95 corridor region, like D.C., Philadelphia, New York City. We're talking Later Monday into Tuesday time frame, nothing is set in stone. In fact, I would say this right now that uh, you almost have to wait until the passage of this blizzard Friday night, Saturday time frame, uh, depending on how that ends up evolving, could have an impact on the uh, early to middle part of next week. Snow threat in the I-95 Carter region. Again, I think there may be a second a snow threat to deal with at the end of next week, ushering that uh, reinforcing Arctic air mass into the Northeast. Let me just uh, show quickly here the North Atlantic Oscillation Teleconnection Index and then the AO, the Arctic Oscillation. We refer to these quite frequently during the winter time uh, when both are negative territory, at least for a sustained period of time, that tends to suggest there's high latitude blocking, higher pressure, higher heights than normal over places like Greenland and Iceland. That in turn uh, tends to favor a colder and stormier pattern across the eastern states. One other observation that I've had over the years with respect to these teleconnection indices, when they shift or make a kind of a, a dramatic change from deeply negative back towards the neutral line, this transition period right here, a transition in the NAO from relatively deeply negative back to neutral uh, often is associated with storm systems along the eastern seaboard. So this is something, kind of another, maybe a supporting piece of evidence that indeed the uh, East Coast can deal with one or perhaps two storms. This is uh, January 15th right here, which is Monday, and uh, the t that transition, that sharp transition uh, again, associated with the NAO here, and we'll see in a moment with the AO as well. Oftentimes, is a kind of a, 
uh, a signal for a storm along the eastern seaboard. Let's take a look at the AO. And here we go. Here's the Arctic Oscillation, the same pattern uh, with a dramatic transition, uh, basically beginning this weekend and continuing until the end of January. Right here, everything in red is a forecast. And again, from deeply negative territory back towards neutral, and oftentimes when the NAO and AO shift dramatically like that, there is a storm along the uh, eastern seaboard. Well, let's stick with the European model here. I think it has a better handle on the situation for the early part of next week, the middle part of next week, in terms of that I-95 uh, corridor snow threat. Uh, this is, I think the GFS, by the way, is, is a little bit too quick, a little bit too progressive on uh, the, the system that will uh, help to produce low pressure near the uh, eastern seaboard. So again, I'm focusing on the European model. This is actually the ensemble run from last night um, of the European model. And this is the forecast map for midday on Tuesday. And what we're seeing here is its range of its ensemble members where that low pressure will be centered. And again, this has been kind of consistent here somewhere just off the Carolina coastline. And I'll just push forward here. Notice it, it, it pushes off to the North Andes. Not at all a bad position right here. Let's take the center of that. Not a bad position at all for some snow back in the I-95 Carter region, DC, Philadelphia, New York City. So the European ensemble has been pretty consistent. Now, there's a little bit of a range here. It could go a little farther out to sea, which of course would have an impact. It could come a little closer to the coast, uh, which would have a little bit of an impact in terms of being warmer. But for right now, this is a pretty favorable position for snow in the I-95 corridor region. And by the way, that snow, if it does materialize, will be in a quite a cold air mass. So the, the, the average ratios of uh, rain to snow, that 10 to 1 ratio, 10 inches for every inch of rain, uh, maybe even higher because this air mass will be cold and dry, so maybe more like 13 to 1 or 14 to, to 1 in terms of uh, snow to rain ratio with this particular system. That's really getting into the weeds and we have several days to work this out. Uh, let's uh, just move a little bit farther in time here. I'll go out a little bit farther and there you go. It goes off the New England coastline by the time we get to late Tuesday night. Quite a uh, healthy look to this system at this particular time. Again, likely to be in the form of snow for the most part along the eastern seaboard. Well, certainly one of the things I like to look at with respect to the possibility of snow in the I-95 Carter region or anywhere for that matter, upper level jet streaks. This is the forecast map again using the 0Z run of the European model. This is for Monday morning, January 15th at the 250 millibar level, jet streak at the 250 millibar level. And I just want to kind of walk through the uh, uh, time period of Monday into Wednesday to show that indeed we will have a strong upper level jet streak associated with this system. This is now into Tuesday morning. Look at the intensification of that upper level jet streak here as of Tuesday morning and it certainly uh, gives us a signal that this could be a pretty strong system somewhere off the Mid-Atlantic or New England coastline during the first half of next week. Now, one last set of charts for the early to middle part of next week. Again, I'm skipping ahead here. We'll get to the blizzard next. This is the forecast map from the Zero Z European model for Monday morning, January 15th. And here we have uh, some uh, moisture starting to gather together over the south central states. We'll just see what the European model does. And by the way, it shows on this particular set of maps all precipitation in green. So this uh, very well is likely to be snow right here, uh, but it's shown up on this particular map in green. This is Tuesday morning, and here we go. And we saw the ensemble low pressure areas right near the uh, North Carolina coastline or just off the coastline. Indeed, this is the operational version, has that off the new, uh, North Carolina coastline as of Tuesday evening likely to be in the form of snow all the way uh, over the I-95 Carter region, maybe even uh, to the coastline here. 
Uh, and again, we'll have to see over the next several days the final positioning of this particular storm system. A little bit farther out to sea, and obviously that would mean less precipitation in the I-95 corridor region, a little bit closer, a little bit stronger to the coast. That could introduce the possibility of some rain, but right now it's taking a path that is pretty favorable for some accumulating snow in that D.C., Philadelphia, New York City corridor, and then up along the New England coastline as well. Well, now let's get back to the short term and the blizzard coming to the Great Lakes in the Midwest, and we're using now the GFS model. I think it has a pretty good handle on this storm system, which is in the near term. This is the forecast map for this morning from last night's zero Z run of the GFS. Now, let's push forward here, uh, and we'll have uh, quite an impressive storm here. First of all, this is the forecast map for midday tomorrow, midday on Friday. Uh, notice the pressure level here, right here at 983 millibars and pressure gradient, quite intense. This will have a lot of wind associated with it, especially over the Midwest and the Great Lakes. I think winds 60 to 70 miles per hour during this storm event over the Midwest, over the Great Lakes. Uh, just incredible winds here, 975 millibar low by the time we get to tomorrow evening in an all-out blizzard. Uh, places like Chicago, uh, Madison, Milwaukee, ultimately Grand Rapids, even Detroit should get in on uh, good snow. And again, very, very strong winds and all-out blizzard for parts of the Midwest and the Great Lakes. And those strong winds uh, we mentioned up front will continue all the way into the day on Sunday in places like Buffalo where that NFL game, playoff game is a Sunday afternoon. Uh, it'll still be gusting up to 50 miles per hour or so on Sunday afternoon. Very, very tight pressure grading here. All the way down to 971 millibars here now by late tomorrow night. Uh, that doesn't happen too often here. And the, uh, the pressure grading is just intense here. By the way, in the Mid-Atlantic, in the Northeast U.S., as was the case the other night, uh, winds will be uh, very strong out of the southeast. That should uh, certainly produce temperatures well above the freezing mark. Another heavy rain event centered on Friday night uh, in places like D.C., Philadelphia, New York City. Again, the potential for some flooding because the grounds are extremely saturated uh, in the, this part of the nation and again the possibility of some power outages uh, with uh, certainly with the possibility that there are weakened tree uh, tree limbs from the other uh, the other day and uh, so uh, very strong southeasterly winds uh, in the mid-atlantic and some heavy rainfall tomorrow night into early saturday and here is the storm system center right over uh, the uh, Great Lakes, and again, all-out blizzard conditions for parts of Illinois, Indiana, much of Michigan, Wisconsin, and those blizzard conditions will end up extending all the way into New York State, for example, uh, northwestern Pennsylvania, just downstream of the still relatively unfrozen, the still relatively warm Lake Erie, Lake Ontario. Expect some heavy snow bands, uh, snow showers, uh, later Saturday, Saturday night, even into the day on Sunday, and there will there will be extremely strong winds as well, 50, 60, maybe even 70 miles per hour. So while the snow may not be significant, places like upstate New York, for example, uh, with the, this system, there will be lake effect snow bands, maybe some heavy snow squalls, and blizzard-like conditions because uh, whatever snow falls will be whipping around in these powerful winds. And uh, by the way, this system uh, ushers in that colder air mass into the eastern states uh, right here by the day, by the time we get to Sunday, and still very tight pressure gradient uh, across the Great Lakes and all the way into the northeast. It'll be strong west to northwest winds throughout this area all the way into the day on Sunday. And this is when the cold air really starts to push into the, the mid-Atlantic region, northeast U.S., and again, that could set up uh, for some accumulating snow 
uh, somewhere in that later Monday, Tuesday time frame, places like D.C., Philadelphia, New York City, and then ultimately up along the New England coastline as well. We'll go all the way out into Monday morning, and here's uh, when that uh, blizzard pulls away out of uh, eastern Canada, and we look to the next system that, again, we talked about at length earlier, could produce some accumulating snow early to middle part of next week in uh, parts of the Mid-Atlantic region and Northeast U.S. So that's it for now. It's been an, a long, extended video discussion. A lot going on. For ArcfieldWeather.com, I'm meteorologist Paul Dorian.